Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So, PlayStation mascots. Let's talk about it. Now, PlayStation has been around for a long, long time. I think the PS1 came out in like 1994 or something. I mean, shit, the PlayStation 1 is older than me. <laughs> but look, PlayStation has had a lot of mascots over the years. So, from God of War to Uncharted to Jack and Daxter to Ratchet and Clank. I could go on all day. But what I want to do today is just talk about some of the forgotten mascots. You know, some mascots that were big in the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 era. Now, I'm not going to do popular ones like, you know, Crash Bandicoot and Spiral, because, I mean, those are fairly obvious, but I couldn't do those if I wanted to, because, number one, they're not PlayStation exclusive anymore. Number two, I think they went third party in, like, the early 2000s. I'm not quite sure. But look, I think you get the point by now. I'm just going to be talking about some forgotten, weird, and obscure PlayStation mascots. Hey, if you want to, stick around, but I guess enough bullshit. Let's get started. From Sony's PlayStation come the greatest hits, all your old favorites. Like the soft sounds of swarm and missile. And the gentle crack of Sophia's whip. You have a hilarious antics of sweet tooth, that lovable clown. All for just $24.99 each, but wait. There's more. Oh. That's right, the PlayStation is a mere $149, and you can also get leading titles. Like Crash Bandicoot and Jet Moto. For just $49.99 and less. You are not ready. First mascot that I want to talk about is Ape Escape. There hasn't been a game in the Ape Escape series for a long time. I think I think the last Ape Escape game that came out was for the PlayStation 3. It's 3 and that was sort of shovelware for the for the PS3 move or whatever. But look, it seems like we're going off the rails. To give the Ape Escape franchise a little bit of context, the first game released on the PS1 in 1999, and it was kind of the first game that required a DualShock controller. And this is kind of where the Ape Escape series kind of got started. And all of the mainline Ape Escape games besides the spin-offs are kind of a uh, collectathon, similar to Banjo-Kazooie or Mario 64. Except, you know, this time you're trying to collect apes that are trying to escape. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Now, believe it or not, the Ape Escape franchise is far more popular in Japan than in America, because, of course, why wouldn't it be? Of course, see, mainline games released in America and Europe, and some spin-offs and a few PSP games, but the rest of the games kind of released in Japan. Now, when I say Ape Escape is far more popular in Japan, I, I really mean it. Like, there was commercials that you wear, like, it was sort of a huge thing in Japan, at least compared to the rest of the world. But yeah, Ape Escape was sort of a huge mascot during the PS1 and PS2 days. Speaking of mascots from the PS1 and PS2 days, how about some Parappa the Rapper? Parappa the Rapper released in 1996 for the PS1 and this game was kind of cool for the time. Now to sort of explain the gameplay, just think of Friday Night Funkin' but in the 90s. So you just follow the button combinations on the screen and of course it came with a story but to be honest it doesn't really matter, it's kind of a basic, you know, dance on distress type of story. You basically go through different levels and of course you go through different songs and you have to, you know, match the buttons. There's really only a few games in the Parappa the Rapper series, of course there's Parappa the Rapper 1, of course, the sequel, the spin-offs, the PSP games. Parappa the Rapper has a very short library, but to be honest, this franchise kind of took off in Japan. I mean, I think Parappa the Rapper even got its own anime at one point, and the merchandise for the game just fucking took off in Japan. I mean, I think there's even like a Parappa the Rapper cafe. But yeah, man, another dope franchise that kind of took off in Japan and got sort of ignored everywhere else. Now the next mascot I'm going to be talking about is really, really obscure. I promise not a lot of you have heard about this mascot. PlayStation. Toro. Now this is a really obscure PlayStation mascot. Now. Toro is, of course, the mascot for the Pocket Station. It's basically a Dreamcast VMU, but for the PlayStation. Now, of course, this mascot goes a little bit beyond that. Toro has a few games, of course, the Pocket Station game for the PS1, a few for the PS2, and a PSP game. Now, all these games are Japan. Now, to kind of describe the games, it's a mixture of point and click and Animal Crossing. I know that's kind of hard to imagine, but to be honest, this whole mascot is weird. Anyway though, ladies and gentlemen, that's really all I got. I just want to talk about some forgotten PlayStation platformers and uh, yeah, I guess if you want to, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do in rush and uh, tell me down below, what's your favorite PlayStation mascot? Tell me down in the comments and I'll see you guys later.
Peace.